Good afternoon. We're calling, I'm doing this to first of all, first and foremost, thank you all for coming out massively and showing that Lagos State is the birthplace and home of the obedient movement. And more than that, standing strong despite all the harassment, despite all the inconvenience, despite all the obstacles that were put in our way, people were out till 11 o'clock standing to make sure that their votes counted, despite the broken promises of the INEC chairman. So I want to say again, we thank you, Lagosians. The Labour Party thanks you. We thank all the well-meaning Lagosians that came out to vote for His Excellency Peter Obi on Saturday. It is important to note that this was not a tribal victory. We won in places where the opposition party has never won in two decades. We won in Alimosho, we won in Ikeja, we won in Lagos mainland. Despite all the, all the cheating and manipulation of votes that we saw, from 50,000 votes that's missing our vote counts in Alimo Short, so now 20,000 missing our vote counts in Ikeja. From our situation room, we see that we won over 900,000 votes, as opposed to the APC's 155,000 votes. And this was done because you all came out in mass and showed your strength. And this was done also without any monetary inducement. So we cannot continue, we cannot stop thanking the good people of Lagos. We made history in that election, and we took Lagos State and restored it back to the people. It's important to note that we unequivocally, unequivocally reject the results, we reject the process by which these results were announced. The fact that there was no transmission of votes electronically completely brings into, the quest, into question the credibility of the entire election process. So we completely reject the results that came out of this because we know that Labour Party scores so much more votes than has been allotted to us. There are many issues that have been addressed recently since the victory of the great people of Lagos in the elections. We've seen rumours and allegations that the civil servants are going to lose their jobs massively in a new government. And I'm here to tell you that the Labour Party believes in dignity of labour. We will focus on making, giving you a living wage as opposed to a minimum wage. We will focus on creating more opportunities for you to have access to credit, access to student loans to make your lives easier. We will focus on giving you the skills to be able to create a world-class civil service. Because Alaji Latif Jakon, they achieved in four and a half years what this present government has not done in 20 years. And he did it with the civil service. So we believe in the civil service. There will be no such thing as redundancies. We will partner together and work to make sure that your lives are much better than the quality of lives that you currently have now. The only people that have anything to fear are people that have been taking money from the Commonwealth of Lagos. Alpha Beta that has accrued so much money, over a trillion naira in present value. Those monies we are going to take and put into employment schemes for the people of Lagos. Because we've seen that the APC government has been prolific in, in increasing the amount of unemployed youth that we have on our streets. I've been prolific in increasing the amount of touts and agbaros that roam our roads. But these are our sons, and we're going to make sure that we get employability skills to make them productive members of society and give them an alternative means of earning a living. So civil servants, you have nothing to fear with this new government. In fact, you have more job security because the wealth of Lagos will be used for the people of Lagos, and you are the people of Lagos. I tell the youth, I know that some of you are discouraged. This was your election, and you showed your strength. Do not be discouraged. His Excellency Peter Obi is going to retrieve his mandates. We have all our original polling unit, unit results, and we are going to court. And it is, this is not, it's not a controversial victory. It's one that is clean and clear. The people, of, the people of Nigeria came out to vote massively. So keep your head up. We have another battle to face, and we need you to be in your highest spirits, because we must complete this project of taking Lagos and taking Nigeria back and recovering it for the people of Nigeria. Our plan this day and as we are, and you'll see it in the media moving forward, is our empowerment scheme that is focused on lifting a million people out of, in Lagos out of poverty. Our big aim in, with our government is to ensure that we tackle 
urban poverty. And by doing this, we are going to take the wealth that has accumulated to one man, his family, and his cronies, and put it into the arms of the everyday Lagosian. These funds that accrue to almost 400 plus billion in four years is going to be put into soft loans and low interest loans that will be applied to profitable and productive enterprises that work directly with the government. We are going to lift a million people out of poverty and the people of Lagos will be glad that they trusted us with the Commonwealth of Lagos. Having said all this, it's important to note that we have been fooled once because the INEC chairman promised us that we're going to have electronic transmission of votes. The, the security agencies promised us that we're going to have a very calm, peaceful election. We saw that's not the case, and that's not going to happen again. I assure you, Lagosians, come out in confidence because we have made plans for your safety, robust plans for your safety, and you'll start to see those plans manifest in the next coming days. So don't be deterred. We must complete this mission that we have started. Plans are on ground for your safety and you'll be protected. I assure you of this. We have made independent arrangements and you can be assured that you are going to be safe. Recently also, different characterizations have come out, of me, come out in relating to me, my lineage, which is very ironic. In a state where the leader of it has so much controversy surrounding his origin, I have no such thing. I am from the Rosvival family of Lagos Island. My family is married and entrenched with the Adini Jones, the Brancos, and all prominent families in Lagos State. City Hall is built on my family land. These are not controversial statements. My great-great-grandfather was the second ever indigenous judge in this country. Going down to, we have produced judges in every generation. The last one, re, last one recently retired, representing Lagos on the Supreme Court. And there are so many, so many arms of my family that have contributed heavily and made history in being of service to this great state of Lagos. My uncle was the Baba Morphin of Lagos. So, the Baba Morphin of Lagos. So, it's extremely strange that people will try to erase my pedigree, a pedigree that comes directly from Lagos. And yes, my mother is Igbo. This makes me the best of both worlds. My wife is Igbo, it's true. At the same time, that makes me the embodiment of a cosmopolitan Lagos. I am literally what Lagos is. I represent the interests and everything that is Lagos. And it doesn't make me any less proud as a Lagosian. It doesn't make me any less proud to be a true-born, free-born Lagosian that wants the best for his people and wants the best for Lagos. Having said all this, Lagosians, I've seen the suffering in Lagos. I've seen it. And there are things that we know for a fact. We know that the current government is not going to get rid of Alpha Beta. Those resources are still going to be going to empower state capture. We know that this government is not going to reduce the number of young boys wasting their lives on the roads as area boys and touts. We know that they use them and weaponize them so that for these moments they can use them to suppress, suppress votes. But you know with my government that is going to change. We are going to make them productive members of society. We are going to give them a good quality life. And we are going to ensure that the people of Lagos benefit from it. You can learn more about my manifesto on our website, www.grvlagos.com, where I talk about how we're going to address our transport issues, our healthcare issues, our development and accommodation issues that bedevil this state, and to create a Lagos that works for all of you. My people, we saw what happened on Saturday. A government that attacks its own. We are still healing from the answers attack on people that they did not discriminate whether they were Igbo, Yoruba, or Hausa when the army fired at them. They did not discriminate. And on Saturday, they did the same thing again. All over Lagos, from Ojo to Lagos Island, in front of Oniru's palace, in front of Olegushi's palace. Everybody, as long as you're proud to be associated with the Labour Party, they came at us. Is that the government that has any love or empathy for its people? It's time to put a government that cares about the people and puts the interests of the people first. And will do the work so that people can vote them in and not suppress their way or intimidate their way into office. I call on you for your spirits to be lifted up. We made history in Lagos. We won Ali Mosho. We won Ikeja. We won so many local governments. 
And our results have shown that we actually got over 900,000 votes. So come out again. We've done it before. Let us do it again. God bless you, Lagos. God bless you. Thank you. Been watching the Labour Party governorship candidate for Lagos State, that's um, Badebo Rhodes Viva. And he's saying that the victory, which was recorded by the Labour Party just a few days ago over the weekend, was not tribal and it was a victory that should not be underestimated. And despite all that he refers to as the manipulation of votes, he is thankful for the people of Lagos coming out and making history on election day. He rejects the results and the credibility of the entire election process and will focus on creating more opportunities and a world-class civil service if he emerges governor. He's made it very clear that there will be no redundancy, and we'll come back to that. But we still have Bode Oshosomi, who's standing by. Okay, we'll, we'll go back to the Labour Party um, governorship candidate who's still addressing, the, addressing us at this time. And it's open now, and it will start to be implemented in the first 100 days of our office. So after that, uh, is there any other candidate uh, still supporting or uh, join your camp? We are, we are, thank you, that's a very good question. We are talking, we are in alliance, and we have started talking with the owners of the structure of the PDP the owners of the structure, the people that matter in the PDP. And we are sure that in the coming days, we are going to come into a full alignment with them to ensure that we take Lagos in this next election. My name is Darido, I report for Channel Steve. This question is this. Of course, there are fake knives, there are people who are agitated after this election, and you've also mentioned the fact that they're not acceptable. So what is your message to your supporters, especially those in Lagos? That's the first one. The second one, it's the fact that, of course, LP did quite well in Lagos, very well in Lagos, won the state. But going into the governorship election, on the premise that people have always loved the safe option that, okay, at the top, there's the ruling party there, let's go, let's go there. You understand what I'm saying? From the first time, your, from the first time I came out to run in this election, and if you check all my interviews, I said, Lagos State is about to witness an election like they've never seen. I said this because the people that were behind this movement were not moved by money. When we talk about elections in Lagos State previously, you find there's a lot of financial inducement, there's a lot of buying of votes. Sometimes the resources are not available to buy votes in the second situation, but that's not the case here. People are voting for hope. People are moved for the hope of a new Lagos, and they're going to come out even more than it came out the first time. And that is the challenge, because now we have seen how one man, in his interest, has turned and made the INEC process extremely, has rubbished it. It is daylight robbery. It is the equivalent of rape in, the, in an open field, in front of everybody, just because of his selfish, greedy ambition. Right? So people have seen this, and people are going to stand against this, because there's only so long that people can be bullied. It isn't so long and so far you can push a people into the wall before they stand up and they stand back. And that's what we saw on Saturday. And it's not going to end on that Saturday. It's going to repeat itself again. And we are going to be prepared for whatever attacks or harassment that it tries to build because now they have destroyed our faith completely in all the things that they promised us. So we now know that this is something we are going to have to fight for. And I will say, echo, Eddie Day, My brother, I've been in talks with them, but what I've been doing is getting all our people out of prison and jail. What they did was the places where we're strong, they'll snag the ballot box, carry the agents there to, to Pansy. That's what they would do. That's what they were doing. I have a friend that was nearly killed. They tried to frame him up to be, to, to, that he's a ballot snatcher. It's, if not for the timely intervention of the army, I don't think that that, my friend, will still be alive today. So enough is enough. See, if you do the work, the people will vote you in. The people will like good governance. The people want good governance. So if you are not going to do good, give good governance, then stay out of politics. Get out of the seat. 
If you have to intimidate and harass people to go to win an election, get out of the seat. It's time to serve the people. Come in and serve and the people will return you. If you don't serve, then get out of the seat. And that is what the people of Lagos are saying. And they are going to say it again next Saturday. Thank you. Once again, that is the uh, gubernatorial candidate for Lagos uh, addressing the media, answering some questions there. Uh, and yes, indeed, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's all eyes on the ground, Lagos State, March 11th. All eyes on the ground. Uh, listen, some, <laughs> s some huge points made here, Very. Uh, especially with regards to the fact that he said right now he's spending most of his time trying to get people out of prison, right. uh, you know, from the fallout of, you know, false accusations uh, on election day. Mm. So, you know, that gives you an insight of what really transpired in Lagos, because there's a lot of back and forth going on with, uh, you know, people are saying people on social media are crying wolf, mm. it's fake news, it's this, mm. uh, versus, you know, what people on social media experienced and, and, and they're sharing. Right. Um, so, uh, so I think that's a very big point to note as we count down uh, to the gubernatorial election. I, I second that completely. And I think also what will give um, Lagosians a sense of duty or the strength to come out that day is the fact that he said that private arrangement is being made for security. Mm. And um, no matter what the those in the security agents have said when they've sp sent their spokespeople here or their media people, people did not feel a sense of safety from what we understood that day. And I think that that's something that was worth addressing that he definitely touched on. And I hope he's able to implement that so that um, people can still c try to have their say again on March 11th. Safety is number one. Yeah. Every, the, the two main things that every individual that is casting a vote wants is to be safe and also for their votes to be counted. The three of us had Benjamin Hundain, the public relations officer of the police, and we asked him to assure Lagosians that they will be safe on March 11th. And he assured them, so it's, it's so he's talking about safety, the Labour Party candidate is talking about safety, it's all about safety. All right.